It's one of the largest animal kingdoms left in the world. The Kruger National Park in South Africa, rich with life after the rain. A timeless, mystical place stocked with nature's most beautiful species. But one rises above the rest. Kruger is ruled by the lion. But now the lions are falling prey to an insidious enemy. A killer disease is infecting the once majestic prides. At the moment you see a lame animal with a lacklustre skin and one blind eye limping along and they've got sores that, that, that cannot heal and um, it's, it's, a, it's a pathetic looking animal. Kruger National Park covers more than two million hectares. It's one of the most important lion sanctuaries in the world. The park draws in more than 6,000 tourists every day. And it's the lions which are the prime attraction. But these lions, as healthy as they look, have the prospect of an early and painful death. An interloper from Europe, a killer which has the potential to drastically alter the ecological balance, is sweeping the park. Tuberculosis is seeping into the food chain, and right at the top of that chain is the lion. He's in bad condition, I'd say uh, two out of five. Dr. Um, Deervolt Kitt is dealing with the distressing debris of the TB um, outbreak. In fact, you can see the kidney here. Yeah. He spent the past 13 years in the park as the chief state veterinarian. He was the first to diagnose the disease in free-ranging lions. Initially, we were all shocked to an extent because we never expected such an exotic disease of a cooler climate to actually penetrate our healthy ecosystem. And we thought it was just perhaps uh, just a flash in the pan because it was right on the periphery of the park. But subsequently we found that um, the park was already well infiltrated. What are the samples that we've got here, Devon? Dr. Kitt's so initial suspicions of tuberculosis were met TV with scepticism from some of his colleagues. Some samples over here. The outbreak which he um, described was difficult to see. Spinal cord the evidence was deep inside the bones and the organs of the lions. The, beak, uh, the, the bone got weakened by the tuberculous lesions and Obviously a lion is living a very hard life and when he's got to hunt there's a men, tremendous stresses on his, on his legs and fractures are likely to occur. <coughs> Bovine tuberculosis came into the park more than 40 years ago. It arrived with cattle which strayed into the park from neighbouring farms. They soon passed on the disease to wild buffalo, which were grazing in the same area. Each time an infected member of the herd coughed or spluttered, tiny droplets of TB bacteria were released into the air. It was breathed in by the buffalo and slowly multiplied in their lungs. The damage eventually is immense, because ultimately about 80% of the lung volume can become infected with lesions like this. So the animal hasn't got the capacity to run away, it, it's not fit at all anymore and becomes easy prey on lions. Yeah. And lions are very lazy animals. They would obviously go for the, for the cripples and the, the slow animals and if they can, they'd rather scavenge than, than kill animals. <laughs> The lions were soon paying a heavy price for what appeared to be an easy meal. They ate the mature tuberculosis directly from the infected buffalo. 
No, people believed that, that lions became infected, but they were a bit skeptical when they heard the percentage of lions infected in the so-called high prevalence areas, which is at the time of our last survey, which was 78%. And One uh, of those sceptics is Dr Gus Mills, the park's ecologist. We, we don't want to hide anything. Yes, we've got the disease. Yes, it's here. Yes, there is some concern about it. Uh, but we are looking at it and really we've got to report the facts. And I think one must be careful not to take isolated incidents out of context and say this is what's happening over the whole population. But many of the once mighty prides of Kruger have already fallen victim to TB. This was the Crocodile Bridge Pride two years ago, one of the best known and extensively researched prides in the park. Now they are no more. Riddled with TB, they were easy prey for neighbouring lions. Two territories have been taken over by two completely new prides, and this has never been described before. It's absolute abnormal lion behaviour. And it's purely because both the male and the female component of the older pride became weakened due to the disease. But Dr Gus Mills believes it's all part of nature and something that tourists visiting Kruger must come to terms with. We always have sick and animals. Animals, and I think this is something that the public has to accept uh, is that nature is cruel and, and that, that animals sometimes do uh, get injured or they do get thin and they do die and they do die sometimes not horrible deaths, slow deaths by starvation. Divock Kitt believes tuberculosis could have an impact well beyond the boundaries of the park. We've only got about 21,000 lions left on the entire African continent. And it's not much of a genetic pool. And you need genetic diversity to maintain the well-being of a species. And if a disease is slowly eroding away on a population, um, it's going to influence genetic diversity over a very long period of time. And I don't think we can afford losing individuals and losing genetic diversity due for, uh, for some exotic disease that landed up on this continent. What is important to us is not the individual animal, it's the population. Is our population healthy? Is our population turning over at an acceptable limit? Are the numbers fluctuating? And all population numbers do fluctuate. They go up and down as ecological conditions change. Are those acceptable to us? And are those what we would consider to be within a natural uh, uh, fluctuations? And so far, all the evidence is, is that, yes, this is, this is happening. But as tuberculosis spreads further into the park, it's becoming more difficult to contain. Just before sunset, Divolt Kit prepares to call in a pride of lions to be tested for TB. It's a difficult task. He uses loudspeakers to play the sounds of an animal in distress to attract the lions. As they feed, he darts them one by one with anaesthetic. While the lions are sedated, Dr. Kit injects tuberculin under their skin. Bring about some sort of an immune response. He also fits radio collars. He needs to catch exactly the same lions in 72 hours time to check the results. It's a time consuming process. With tuberculosis already infecting up to 78% of lions in the worst affected areas, it's vital to gain more information on the hosts of the disease, the buffalo. Oh, but I'm struggling to pick up 85 and it's a much stronger collar. At first light, members of the Buffalo TB Research Project are looking for the herds. 
Um, it's not typically that difficult. It's just uh, sometimes they're not close to the road and then it takes us a little bit longer. Paul Cross is a member of the research team. In some parts of Kruger, up to 90% of the buffalo are host to the disease. The point of this project is to understand how TB is spreading through the park. Try to get a handle on which management strategies are going to be more effective. From the work we've done so far, that you would need to vaccinate a large portion of each herd every year in the park. And at the moment, there's roughly 26,000 buffalo in the park. So that means vaccinating probably upwards of 80 to 100 percent of those individuals and then revaccinating the new individuals each year for many years. So for me it's hard to fathom having the having the financial and the logistical capability of being able to do that in a system like Kruger Park. The researchers are testing the buffalo for TB. Blood and tissue samples are taken for analysis. The buffalo is then branded and videoed for future reference. Like the lions, a radio collar is fitted so it can be found again in the vastness of the park. It's a swift raid, all in the name of science. Okay. In the north of the park, away from the worst affected regions, tuberculosis is almost out of sight. Many of the lions here are yet to show any signs of the illness. The rangers are keeping a close watch for symptoms. But it could be only a matter of time before these two become infected. He yeah, is in good condition. He does look like he's actually doing fine, even though the circumstances. There are fears that TB could spread further into Kruger Park and beyond its boundaries. The park and its surroundings are not isolated from one another. Now it's not a case of keeping the disease out of Kruger, it's all about keeping it in and preventing it from spreading into surrounding areas. Where it's escaped, drastic measures have already been taken. The owners of this private game reserve outside Kruger were ordered to kill all of their lions. The 11 males and females had tested positive for TB. Wait, I only ever shoot that one again. Shoot it again. Shoot it again quickly. Shoot it. Stop, stop, stop. The owners of the reserve called in fee paying hunters in an effort to recoup some of the costs of losing the lions. Shoot it again. Well, I think, you know, everyone was very, very shattered and, and very upset because um, it's a big part of tourism. Uh, a lion is probably the one thing that tourists do want to see when they come into a, a, a game reserve or a private game reserve. It's, it's, it's on, it tops the list. Lion and leopard would probably top their list. So, yeah, this, this was very shattering. The lions of Kwamadwala Reserve became trophies for the hunters. Government vets say there was no choice but to order the shooting of the animals. But they deny that the decision to cull was an overreaction. Well, I don't say we are overreacting. The thing is, we don't know 
much of the occurrence of this disease in game because it's it's difficult to do surveys. <laughs> what if you are wrong, if you've acted too quickly when the facts are not yet available? Well, it's always easy to, to say in retrospect that you've, you've been wrong and uh, I don't think a wrong can be corrected by, by anything else. Uh, but at the time, with a lack of, of knowledge, I don't think that we've overreacted at all. Now, officials from neighbouring reserves are understandably nervous. Johan van der Volt is a ranger at Marloth Park, a local government reserve that shares a boundary with Kruger. Let's see. Where is he now, Johan? He might be up there in the road, the up ahead of us. Let's see. Maybe he's just moved off a little bit. Oh, here he is. Here. Oh, there he's fine. Right. Rangers like Johan fear that tuberculosis is spreading. This lion should be in his prime. He's yet to be tested, but he's already showing signs of TB. His condition is not that good at this stage. He looks like a very hungry lion. But you can see, you know, he hasn't, he's, he's still got some food in his stomach. His stomach is not really complete, completely empty. So obviously what he's doing is he's scavenging off whatever the other animals in the pride is, is catching. What most probably will happen with this one, he will be, he will be killed by the other males. Because he, you know, they go into quite serious fighting in, in such a takeover. And in his condition, he won't be able to defend himself uh, to another lion, you know, especially if it's, even if it's four or five years old. So uh, he must probably be killed then, yeah. Oh, there is a lion. It's a problem without a clear solution. Remain seated and quiet. If authorities shoot all the infected lions, they risk damaging the tourist trade. And even if the lions were culled, TB would still live on in other species. The other option is simply to allow nature to take its course. Whichever path is chosen by officials, the future for the lions of Kruger National Park is uncertain. <laughs>